bright duty every student matters hello everybody welcome back to our history class so today we are going to look at chapter 11 chapter 11 and in this chapter we'll look at a very popular event in history of india which is revolt of 1857 okay uh, it it was one of the uh, important events that took place in the 19th century. All right. So this chapter is all about that event that took place in the summer of 1857. And uh, the chapter mainly tells us about various representations of the event, which is the revolt of 1857. So the event is revolt of 1857 or the great rebellion of 1857 or rebellion of 1857 all right and how it has been represented uh, how we can understand the event what was its impact how can a historian write about it from where the historian can get information uh, about the event to write about it what was the reaction of the people? What were the causes of this particular event? What led to people uh, rebel against the British government? So this chapter is all about that event. All right. And as we move on, we understand various aspects of this event and various participation uh, and representations of the event. So first, let's look at the event on a, uh, let's look at the broad overview of the event okay let's look at uh, the event broadly now we know that when english east india company which was initially a trading company right the english merchants had come to trade with the merchants and traders of india and over time it began to conquer uh, it began to control it began to capture annex indian territories fight with indian native rulers and uh, have control get con um, and win over their territories their power their authority and gradually they established their rule now when the british rule was established consolidated so many changes occurred okay the british administration brought many new changes in our society in polity as well as in economy okay so one of the main important uh, change that was brought to India was the degeneration of the country was the decline of the country and mainly in its political sphere economic sphere and social sphere okay so the decline was political economic as well as social Okay, and why did this happen? Because the British were only uh, were only bothered about their interests. The British uh, were only um, uh, interested in making profits and were not interested uh, in improving the lives of the Indians. All right, they only wanted to make profit. They only wanted to promote their interests. They were very selfish. They did not think about anyone else other than themselves. Okay, and their policies were expansionist policy. They expanded, uh, tried to expand their territory. They tried to conquer. They tried to, uh, they tried to annex and capture more and more territories from the Indian rulers. Okay, and they exploited. They exploited most of the sections of the Indian society. So the farmers were exploited, the landlords were exploited, the sepoys in the military were exploited, the nobles were exploited, all the people were exploited by the British government. Okay, they ruined cottage and handicraft industries, the small scale industries which in India was flourishing uh, after the British consolidation of power in India. These small scale industries, the cottage industries, the handicraft industries of India, they declined. Okay. 
Now, all these policies that were taken, uh, that were introduced by the British government and implemented on India, uh, and all uh, the uh, and the kind of attitude that the British government uh, adopted towards the Indians, how they exploited the Indians, how they led to the decline of the economy of India, all these were were um, all these angered. All these caused uh, the Indians to develop anger, hatred, dislike against the British government. Okay, the people were suffering. The people were impacted by all these policies of the British government, but they were quietly registering uh, all these complaints of theirs, all these problems and sufferings, all these grievances that they had been. Uh, accumulating over a period of time the grievances of dissatisfaction, of suffering, of economic decline, of poverty, of exploitation, of manipulation, etc. These are all um, kept by the people. And then this led to the formation of hatred, anger, which led which led them to uh, a rebellion against the British government. Okay? So all these policies of the British uh, compel the Indians to rise in revolt against the British in many parts of the country. Okay, these were all the policies which actually caused the people to be angry, caused the people to dislike the British government and then rise against them. Okay, uh, now this was the revolt of 1857 was not the first revolt where we see people of India revolting against the British. The people of India speaking or raising their arms against the British. It was not the first time. Okay, even before the mutiny, the revolt of 1857 is also called Sepoy Mutiny. Okay, because as you will see later that it was the the sepoys who had actually come together and started this revolt, all right? So there was other uh, revolts, series of revolt that had taken place against the British before the, uh, before the revolt of 1857, okay? Now some of the famous uh, revolts were Kutch Rebellion, Coal Uprising of 1831, Santal Uprising of 1858. So these are some of the uh, rebellions, uh, some of the fights that the Indians uh, fought against the British, the Indians uh, organized against the British even before the 1857 revolt. Okay, But the difference between the revolt of 1857 and these uprisings which occurred, took place before the 1857, uh, before the revolt of 1857, is that these uh, rebellions such as Kutch Rebellion, the Coal Uprising and Santal Uprising, these were local in nature. They were small and because they were small, the participation was also small, right? It was not a ma mass participation, not the whole people, not the entire nation, the people living across the nation participated in it. it was very small and because of that nature it was easily suppressed it was easily put down by the British government okay but the revolt of 57 was different it was large scale larger than the earlier rebellions such as Kutch, coal uprising santal uprising etc okay this was the first war of Indian independence. Some consider it as first war of independence because the people came together to fight against the foreign rule, to uproot the British uh, rule from India. Okay, That is why this revolt is also called the first war of independence. But however, okay, however uh, large the participation was, however uh, significant this event was, this revolt uh, was not a success. The people of India, the people of India were not able to uh, uproot the British rule from India. Okay, they failed. But however, despite the failure, this event, it sowed the seeds of freedom struggle. Okay, it inspired people people continue to inspire, sowed the seeds of freedom struggle into their minds and this led to the achievement of independence finally in August 1947. Okay. Now let's look at 
the sources from where we can get the information of the event, the revolt of 1857, and uh, from where the historians who write about or who has written about this event, uh, from where do they get the sources, from where do they get the materials, from where they write about the mutiny. Okay. Now, there are various sources for uh, writing about uh, the revolt of 1857. Now, this consists of both published and unpublished records. Okay. Now, there are records, there are documents. Some of them are published, published by the government, published by some institutions, while others are not published. They are kept in the libraries, they are kept in the archives. Both are important sources for the event. Okay. Now, Many of the many of these records are written by contemporary writers, the writers who lived during that time, who witnessed uh, the event unfolding in front of their eyes, who lived during the time of the event, saw it and wrote about it. Okay, and uh, many military officers who fought in the battle during the revolt with or against the uh, against the indians or with or against the british okay and many scholars many scholars of the post mutiny period many scholars from uh, the later part from uh, after the mutiny which is 1857 so they might have written after 1857 uh, during the later half of the 19th century or the 20th century century so all these accounts are also important sources for uh, understanding and writing about the uh, revolt of 1857 okay so most of the uh, sources can be found from the national archives of india which is in new delhi and also from the british library in london Okay, these are the two important places from where we get the sources, all right? The primary sources, they are called. They are very important part of the sources. Now, the National Archives of India in Delhi, it's very, if you've been to Delhi and if you've been to the National Museum, it's on the same street, okay? You go one uh, stop ahead and there's National Archives of India. It's a beautiful, huge building which has loads and loads of uh, documents, records, files, registers from the colonial period, okay? Uh, of the colonial period as well as from the period before the colonial period and after, all right? Now, the National Archives of India has many uh, sources related to the uh, mutiny or the uh, revolt of 1857. They are called press, uh, sorry, mutiny papers, okay? Some of them are in English, uh, others are in Urdu and Persian. Now, there are many records, documents, letters, okay? And those can be found from the foreign department, political and secret department, home department, military department, all right? Now, uh, now this is confusing. Just uh, remember that National Archives of India has loads of sources related to the mutiny or the revolt of 1857 and they can be found from various departments. So the, these papers, the records in the archives, they are cataloged, they are arranged according to the department, different department, okay? Uh, so they can be found from the foreign department, political department, secret department, home department, military department, all right? And you also have mutiny papers, they are in Persian, they are in Urdu, all right? Now in Punjab, uh, the Punjab government also has uh, their record office, all right? And there also, from there also, we get some papers related to the mutiny, all right? So the Punjab government uh, record office has papers of Malvi Rajab Ali, okay? It has uh, manuscript collections entitled Nakal e Mara Salajat and Niakal e See Kajat and Mutiny Papers styled as Intizam Mafsadan. Okay, so these are some of the papers related to the mutiny or the revolt of 1857 that the Punjab government has in their record office. Okay. Now in West Bengal also we have 
uh, an archive okay and there also we have uh, papers that are related to mutiny not only from bengal but in bihar as well because earlier bengal was a big province it included present day orissa uh, present day bihar as well so the papers related to the revolt of 1857 which is present and still exists in the record office or the archives in the west in the state of west bengal uh, it has papers related to a uh, present day bengal bihar as well okay uh in the state of uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh also in their respective archives there are many papers related to the event of 1857 now i already said that apart from the national archive of india and other uh, regional archives archives in different states like uttar pradesh uh, punjab Uh, west bengal etc in uh, london there is a big archive called the uh, british library okay now this library has a uh, sections all right uh, this library also has the usual library section where you go borrow books and read and there are also sections where you get documents official records of the colonial officers and other papers as well related to indian history and there we also find papers related to uh, the mutiny or the revolt of 1857 so the british library has a section called india office library okay or india office record and there we get many uh, uh, documents many papers uh, which are related to the uh, mutiny or the revolt of 1857 and which helps us understand uh, the history of the revolt of 1857 now uh, this section the india office library or the india office record that has volumes of notes and documents used by sir john k okay. okay and uh, he was um, he was uh, in india and he uh, he participated in the uh, mutiny all right when it took place in india in 1857 uh these volumes have some private papers and correspondence of exceptional interest and value these are very important and allows us to understand uh the event in a different light okay gives us new perspective gives us new idea other than the records that are found in the national archives or in the archives in uh, west bengal or punjab etc okay Uh, the diary of kedarnath an english spy at delhi shows that as early as may 20 uh, 1857 so there are accounts written by a uh, brigadier chamberlain as well all right which was passed to sir john k so uh, the notes and documents which um, which are present in the british library and in the collection uh, of sir john k's papers that gives us the picture of uh, the different events that uh, took place during the revolt like siege of delhi all right um, and uh, different experiences of different officers british officers who fought uh, the indians during the rebellion all right now at the british library there is also something called parliamentary papers now the parliamentary papers are also important source for the uh, for the study of mutiny okay so these uh, parliamentary papers they include collection of official narratives of mutiny furnished by magistrates or commissioners of various localities all right so these uh, parliamentary papers consist of the uh, narratives or the accounts of uh, the magistrates and commissioners who were stationed or positioned in different parts of british india it also consists of reports on the engineering operations during the defense of lucknow in 1857 it also contains some accounts of some reports of how the british uh, um, organized or managed the defense or operated their defense measures in lucknow during the rebellion okay as they were fighting the indians 
uh, it also consists of uh, the northwest province of india during the mutiny of 1857 written by sir william muir so it also consists of this writings uh, by sir william muir uh, who wrote about northwest provinces during the mutiny and then it consists of a short and useful compilation from the Calcutta Government Gazette at the fall of Delhi. So it consists of a, a small compilation but a useful one from the Calcutta uh, Government Gazette uh, of the fall uh, of Delhi. All right. Now the British Library also has British newspapers. All right. Now these newspapers also tell us the newspapers of uh, that time of the 1857-1858 that period. Okay, those years. So the newspapers which uh, were uh, which were published during that time, the magazines that were published that time, these are also uh, kept in the British Library under the category called British newspapers, and they also tell us about the violence of the mutineers, the uh, the Indians who mutinied the Indians who rose in rebellion. So those uh, those events have been reported by the newspapers and they are available in the British Library for us to see and read and understand the uh, event. All right. The newspapers are important because they reflect the sentiments of the British people. They reflect not only what the government was doing. They tell not only what the government, how the government was fighting, how many were killed, how many were injured, uh, what places were being captured. Uh, but they also tell us about the sentiments. How were the British feeling? Were they scared? If they were scared, what were they doing out of fear? Right? So all those sentiments are also uh, understood uh, from uh, the British newspapers. Now, apart from the archives, libraries and the records and documents, newspapers found in the archives, we have books. Okay, general works or books which tells us a lot about the mutiny. So let's look at some of them. So the books such as A Personal Journey of Siege of Lucknow by Captain R.P. Anderson. The Campaign in India by Captain G.F. Atkinson. Indian Goop, Untold Stories of the Indian Mutiny by Reverend J.R. Baldwin. And there are several others. History of the Indian Mutiny, Volume 1, 2 and 3 by G.B. Mallison. The Indian War of Independence, 1857 by V.D. Savarkar, etc. So these are all uh, books from where we get information about the uh, revolt of 1857. All right. Now, apart from the records, apart from the official documents, apart from the books, there are also paintings. The paintings also tell us a lot about the uh, mutiny or the revolt of 1857. Now, these paintings were painted during or after the revolt of 1857. And these paintings depict, okay, depict the scenes of the rebellion. They show how the fight was, uh, how the fight was how it occurred or some depiction, some pictures of women crying, uh, uh, people lying dead or injured. So all these depictions which were painted during that time, they tell us a lot about the event, the event of the rebellion of 1857. Okay. So uh, for instance, Baker's painting celebrates the moments of Campbell's entry in Lucknow. So some of the paintings, they celebrate the British officials, British officers, military officers who uh, fought the Indian mutineers during the uh, revolt of 1857 and they celebrate those officers. Okay, they uh, depict these officers as heroes, all right, of the rebellion. Thomas Jane uh, Johns Baker's painting depicts the relief of Lucknow, which he painted in 1859. Joseph Noel Payton, another painting, two years after the mutiny, uh, mutiny, painted in memoriam. It shows English women and children huddled in circle, seemingly waiting for inevitable dishonor, death and violence. But other paintings uh, like that of Joseph Noel Payton, it shows it shows how the 
British or European people were scared. So they they were all in his paintings. What is shown is all the women and children are huddled. Okay, they're all scared and they are holding each other tight and then they're waiting for violence to be done on them for dishonor, for death, okay, which was to come. So in their eyes, what was reflected? Death. Okay, what was reflected fear, fear for their lives. All right, so those depictions were also seen from the paintings, and that gives us uh, an understanding as to how the European women, children were scared during this period when the rebellion took place. Okay. <laughs> And another painting like that of the illustrated uh, London, it it shows us the scenes of execution of mutineers in Peshawar on 3rd October 1857. So some paintings uh, show us how some officers uh, were some officers were heroes of that event, while some other paintings show how. Uh, the European uh, community members were scared, right? Scared for their life. While other paintings shows us how the mutineers, the Indian mutineers, the Indians who participated in the mutiny and fought against the British, they were executed. They were killed as punishment. Okay, so different kinds of paintings were painted and they depict different uh, sides sides of the story of the story of the mutiny and that gives us a picture different picture and helps us in our understanding of the e uh, event all right so those were the uh, sources the sources for the study of the mutiny or the revolt of 1857 those are the uh, sources from where we can get information about the revolt of 1857 and from where the historians get their data from where the historians get their facts get their information and write about the uh, revolt of 1857 or the rebellion of 1857 now let us look at this event okay the revolt of 1857 how it began what were the different events uh, which were the places that saw the mutiny take place okay and uh, what happened so first let's begin with how the mutiny began how did it start who started it all right so the mutiny uh, began or the rebellion began in 1857, right? And it began in Bharatpur, which is in Bengal, okay? It was in the Bengal presidency and it is also in the present day state of West Bengal, all right? So on 28th March, 1857, a sepoy named Mangal Pandey, you must have heard, you have also watched movies about him, right? He asked his fellow soldiers to refuse to use the greased cartridges. So on 28th March 1857, a sepoy, a soldier, okay, whose name was Mangal Pandey, and he was in Barakpur. He told his fr uh, friends, his fellow soldiers, to not to use the greased cartridges that, was, that were used uh, in the guns, okay? Sergeant Hudson and Lieutenant Back tried to capture Mangal Pandey, but he shot down both of them. Now, uh, Mangal Pandey shot his British officers, his senior officers. After that, Mangal Pandey was captured by his officers and he was hanged uh, for shooting uh, his officers on 8th April 1857 okay for uh, revolting single-handed and also attacking his superior officers uh, so mangal pandey became the first martyr of the freedom struggle okay his regiment the regiment in which he was a soldier that was disarmed and disbanded now when this happened when mangal pandey refused to use the cartridges that were used in the gun and he asked his friends not to use the cartridges in the guns uh, as they protested they protested that they would not use the greased cartridges and when uh, they were shut down by the officers okay they were uh, their revolt was uh, shut down then mangal pandey shot two of his officers now when this happened the british officers captured him and hung him 
Okay. Now, when this happened, uh, the other sepoys, the other Indian soldiers in the army, in the British army, they were angry. They were infuriated. Okay. So now they all started to protest and began preparation for revolt. Now, these sepoys from Barakpur, they marched towards Meerut. Okay. Now, what happened in Meerut? Uh, on 9th May of the same year, which is 1857, all right, 85, 85 sepoys of native cavalry at Meerut, they also refused to use the greased cartridges, okay. Now, when they protested, when they said that they will not use the greased cartridges, uh, they were court-martialed. They were punished for disobeying their uh, duty, for disobeying for disobeying their uh, senior officers and they were all sentenced to 8 to 10 years of imprisonment. They were put to jail for 8 to 10 years. Now, when this happened in Meerut, this sparked of a general rising among the Indian soldiers stationed in Meerut. Now, this were this reaction or this punishment uh, of the British officials were not taken well by the other uh, by the uh, by other sepoys in Meerut. So now they also became angry and they started to raise their voice against the British. Okay, they raised the slogans of Har Har Mahadev and kill the Firangis. They became extremely angry. Okay, on 10th May they got released their imprisoned comrades. So on 10th May, on 9th May, their friends were put to jail. On 10th May, they were released. Okay. And when they released, they killed their officers, their senior officers, and then they began to revolt. They raised the banner of revolt. Okay. Next day, they marched to Delhi after sunset. So you can see how the uh, revolt, how this uprising, which began in Barakpur in Bengal, was slowly moving across the northern part of India and now reaching Delhi. Okay. So what happened in Delhi? In Delhi, the rebel sepoys from Meerut arrived at the gates of Red Fort. Red Fort was the place where the British, uh, sorry, where the Mughal emperor lived. Okay. And it was Ram uh, Ramzan day that day. And the old Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah, was the Mughal emperor then, had just finished his prayers and meals. He heard the sepoy rising, uh, raising slogans, victory to Bahadur Shah with the great zeal. So Bahadur Shah heard from inside his palace that sepoys had gathered outside the fort and raising slogans such as victory to Bahadur Shah. Um, they told Bahadur Shah, the sepoys who had gathered, they told him that we have come from Meerut after killing all the Englishmen there. Okay, that's what they told. Another group of sepoys also entered Delhi. So there were other groups also joining uh, the sepoys that had gathered in Delhi. Now, as the sepoys began to join and raise slogans um, in support of Bahadur Shah, the Mughal emperor, and against the British rule, the ordinary people also joined them. Okay, the other people, the farmers and others also started to join the sepoys. The local infantry joined them and killed the European officers and occupied the city. Now in Delhi, the sepoys, they killed the European officers and they occupied the city the city of Delhi. The rebellious soldiers proclaimed Bahadur Shah as the emperor of India and unfurled the Mughal banner. Now, Bahadur Shah was declared the emperor of India and they unfurled the Mughal banner. Okay. Some British officers or soldiers under the command of General Willock B offered some resistance to the rebels, but they were miserably defeated. For some days, the rebels ruthlessly massacred Englishmen. Now, the English officers, the British officers, they resisted the uh, rebels. They resisted these Indian sepoys who were rebelling, but they were met with they were met with a fierce fighting and many uh, Englishmen and English officers or British officers were massacred in uh, Delhi. Okay. 
There was a person called Shah Mal and he lived in a large village of Barut in Uttar Pradesh. Okay. He belonged to a class of Jat cultivators and when he uh, came to know about the people, the sepoys rising in rebellion against the British and when he saw that the other people were also joining, then he mobilized the headmen and cultivators of Chaurasi Des of 84 villages Okay, from his village. He gathered the people, he mobilized, he encouraged them, he urged them to rebel against the British. Okay, he sent supplies to the sepoys who had mutinied in Delhi. He supported uh, the mutineers, the sepoys in Delhi by supplying them with food, whatever they need. He stopped all the official communication between the British headquarters and Meerut. Okay, he stopped the communication between Delhi and Meerut. All right. Uh, Shah Mal took over the bungalow of an English officer and turned it into a hall of justice, settling disputes and dispensing judgments. He took over a, um, a bungalow of uh, an English officer and made it into a court uh, called Hall of Justice and he started to dispense judgments. Okay, For a period, the people felt that Firanki Raj was over and their Raj had come. So for some uh, time, the people of India had actually begun to feel that the Firangis, the British were called Firangis, uh, the British Raj had come to an end and the Indian, their Raj, okay, had started. But they were wrong. This did not happen initially, although they were able to fight off their English opponents, the British opponents, the British officials and soldiers, but this did not last long, okay? Shah Mal was killed in the battle in July 1857, okay? Now, when the news of occupation of Delhi by the rebels spread in the country, now this uh, spread of rebellion from Barakpur to Meera to Delhi, when this uh, happened, the news of this event did not only restrict to Delhi or northern part of India, it spread to other parts of India as well. So there were risings at Lucknow, Aligarh, Banaras, Rohilkhand, etc. Okay, and soldiers from these areas started to march to Delhi in support of the mutineers to rebel against the British government. Okay, now we know that Delhi was captured by the Indian sepoys, right? And they had declared uh, Bahadur Shah as the emperor of India. Now, what did the government, the British government do? Okay, now Lord Canning, who was the governor general during that time, he sent a large force to suppress and to quell the rebellion, okay, to bring down the rebellion. He also asked the native rulers to send him military assistance. Now, he knew that this was not a small rebellion. It would be quite challenging for him to suppress it. So, he, see, he sought assistance. He asked for help from the native rulers and he also asked them to send him some uh, support, some men to fight off the Indian sepoys. Okay. The government set up espionage department. He set up a department of spies who could go around, figure out, learn about what was happening, what was going to happen. Okay. And uh, also that department spread rumors to create dissensions between Hindus and Muslims. So that department also spread rumors so that a difference or a gap would be created between the Hindus and the Muslims and the uh, rebellion would fall apart. Okay. After receiving military help from the rulers of Hyderabad, Gwalior, Patiala, Nabha, Jind, Nepal, etc. So you can see the British government received military support, military help from Hyderabad, Gwalior, Patiala, Nabha, Jind, even Nepal. Okay. So after that, the British commander in chief, uh, Bernard Wilson, Henry Bernard Wilson, sieged Delhi. Okay, sieged means annexed Delhi. The British troops occupied Delhi on 14th September 1857 after fighting for three long months. 
all right uh, but the british commander nicholson was killed in the battlefield one of the commanders were killed the mughal uh, emperor bahadur shah ii who was proclaimed the new ruler of india he was taken prisoner his sons were shot dead before his eyes uh, and uh, bahadur shah was tried and then sent to rangoon where he died finally in 1862 okay thus the rule of the great mughal dynasty okay the rule of bahadur shah finally came to an end and the british government became victorious okay now let's look at how it spread to other parts okay now first we we'll look at kanpur now in kanpur one of the important and popular leader of the revolt was nana saheb okay he was the adopted son of peshwa baji rao second the last maratha peshwa the last maratha ruler he had occupied kanpur in the first week of june and declared himself peshwa so nana saheb fought the british occupied kanpur in the first week of june and declared himself the peshwa the ruler of maratha okay Mr Wheeler the british commander of the fort of kanpur had surrendered after offering some resistance okay so the british had uh, the british did uh, the british had surrendered all right nana saheb had assured the englishmen that he would transport them safely to the board by board to allahabad nana saheb although defeated the british uh, gave gave them his word that they would be transported to allahabad safely but when the englishmen started boarding the boat at sati chora ghat some indian soldiers got very angry hearing about this about nana saheb providing safe passage to allahabad for the british uh, officers um they massacred a large number of british men who were about to be transported only only four british uh, soldiers from among all the soldiers who were to get in the boat to reach allahabad they managed to reach allahabad safely the indian soldiers had not attacked the british soldiers on the orders of nana saheb so nana saheb had not ordered the indians to attack and kill the british soldiers and officers okay he rather took 125 women and children under his safe custody so nana saheb had not allowed had not given the orders to kill the british soldiers but he was kind enough to take women and children okay as many as 125 of them under his safe custody later these women and children were killed at bibigar and their dead bodies were thrown into a well okay so you see this was the state of the rebellion in kanpur okay finally after these events turned out general havelock general neel and general campbell they uh, came to kanpur and crushed and suppressed the rebels nana saheb's forces and reoccupied kanpur now nana saheb was very disappointed with the turn of events and he fled to nepal okay and he was never heard of again all right tantiya top who was one of the loyal servants of nana saheb he went to jhansi and joined rani lakshmi bai there who was fighting against the british during the revolt all right so that was kanpur now let's look and let's look at another city called lucknow what was happening in lucknow in lucknow dr ishwari prasad he observes that probably nowhere the revolt was well organized as in awadh okay so lucknow lucknow was part of awadh all right uh, now in awadh the revolt against the british that was the most well organized revolt all right that the indians uh, organized against the british in organizing this revolt wajid ali shah's begum or 
wife Begum Hazrat Mahal, uh, Maulwa Ahmad Shah of Faizabar, Raja Man Singh, the Talukdar of Shah Gunj, and Raja Hanumat Singh, they played important part. They played the part of leaders, okay, leading the people against the British in Awadh. The civilians and soldiers in Awadh, they rose in favor of the Nawab of Awadh in their fight against the British. The attempt of Chief Commissioner Henry Lawrence to stem the tide by exciting the Hindus and Muslims against each other having failed, he reorganized the defense of Machi Bhavan and the residency where Englishmen and women were to take shelter in case of emergency. Now in Awadh also in Lucknow, the uh, chief commissioner there, the British officer there, tried to break the Muslims and Hindus who had united to fight against the British. All right, but that attempt of Commissioner Lawrence also failed. All right. Now, on the night of 30th May 1857, a cannon boomed in the canton of Lucknow, the pre-arranged signal of revolt. Immediately, massacre, massacre of Englishmen, burning of their houses and hoisting of the green flag of Emperor Shah began. So, from the night of 30th May 1857, the events of revolt, the fight against the British began in Awad. Okay, and during this fight, uh, many Englishmen were massacred, uh, their houses were burned, and then a green flag of Emperor Bahadur Shah was hoisted. Okay, the revolt was led by the Begum of Awadh, who declared her young son Burijis Kadar as the new ruler or Nawab of Awadh. Soon the rising assumed the shape of a popular revolt. It became big and became uh, took a shape of a popular revolt. The sepoys of Lucknow, the Zamindars and the peasants of Awadh and Begum organized an all-out attack on the British. So you see there were sepoys, there were the uh, rulers of Awadh and their forces, the peasants, all of them came together and organized an attack against the British. Okay, They were able to free the whole of Awadh from the British in a few days. The British General Henry Lawrence, along with his 1,000 British and 700 Indian sepoys, had to take shelter in British residency building at Lucknow. So you see, the fight between uh, the forces led by the leaders in uh, uh, Lucknow or Awadh against the British uh, troops led by Henry Lawrence, it was a tough fight. Okay, so much so that Henry Lawrence had to take refuge in a residency building at Lucknow. Okay, on 1st July 1857, the rebels besieged the residency building. On 1st July 1857, the Indian rebels, they uh, captured the residency building where the uh, British forces had taken refuge. Uh, Henry Lawrence, the commander of the British army, was struck by a cannonball and died. And the commander of the British troop, he died uh, there. But the besieged British soldiers continued fighting against the rebels. In June 1857, General Neil captured Allahabad. But in June 1857, another British officer, General Neil, captured Allahabad. Neil and Havelock now proceeded towards Lucknow after capturing Allahabad and fought against the rebels at Kanpur before reaching Lucknow. So from Allahabad, the British troops under General Neil and Havelock, they moved towards uh, Kanpur fought against the Indian rebels and then moved to Lucknow to fight against the rebels there. After occupying Kanpur, they were successful in occupying Kanpur and then they marched towards Lucknow to occupy it from the uh, Indian hands. Okay, They defeated the rebels there and they besieged the residency to rescue the British soldiers. So they captured, uh, sorry, they defeated the Indian rebels, the mutineers in Awadh, in Lucknow, and they also captured the residency, okay? But Neil was killed by the rebels in the street of Lucknow, but uh, General Neil was killed by the Indian uh, mutineers. 
Although Havelock reached the residency, they continued the siege of building. He realized that it was difficult for him to fight against the rebels who were larger in numbers. So he began to wait for reinforcements uh, from Allahabad. Now, after the death of General Neil, his colleague, uh, another officer, Havelock, he saw that he could not fight the Indian rebels. So he waited for more British troops to come so that he can fight against the rebel Indian rebels again. Campbell, who had been newly uh, apport, uh, who had been newly appointed as the commander in chief of the army, he himself marched now to Lucknow with a large army. Okay, the forces of Campbell and Havelock now besieged the rebels. They uh, were able to uh, win over the rebels. Okay, in the fight, a terrible fight continued between the British forces and the rebels in the streets of Lucknow for many days. So the fight between the British and the mutineers in Lucknow went on for days. Unfortunately. The rebels now could no longer hold their capture of the residency and Lucknow. So they had to now give up. Okay. And uh, they continued to occupy large part of the Lucknow. So although they occupied a large part of Lucknow, the Indian mutineers had to give up the residency and some parts of Lucknow to British. Havelock died on 24th September and Campbell continued the fight uh, in Kanpur uh, till the last week of December. Okay. In December 1857, Campbell received reinforcement reinforcements again new batch of soldiers okay this increased his strength his military strength so in february 1850, 1858 a large british army marched from kanpur to lucknow Outram had already reached Alambagh with 4,000 soldiers. The troops of both the commanders completely routed the rebels. The British now occupied the whole city of Lucknow. The loss of Lucknow broke the backbone of rebels. So with the uh, reinforcements that Campbell received in the late uh, 1857, with, the, uh, with that he was able to recapture a uh, Lucknow from the Indian rebels okay now with the occupation of Lucknow by the British the rebels now were disappointed they were discouraged because Lucknow was one of the important cities which saw great fight uh, against the British okay and that had inspired many other Indian sepoys and mutineers peasants to fight against the British when they saw such a important site of the revolt uh, was captured by the British, it it shook them a little, okay? It was as if the backbone of the rebels was broken now, all right? Now let's look at Banaras and Allahabad. What uh, kind of events unfolded there during the revolt? After the rebels had captured Delhi, uh, they spread to Allahabad and Banaras. Okay, so the rebels, uh, the rebels in Delhi after its capture, spread to Allahabad and Banaras as well. All right. General Neil was sent there to crush the revolt in Allahabad and Banaras. He attacked the rebels with help of Sikh and Madras regiments. Okay, with the regiments of Madras and Sikh, he was able to fight the rebels. Neil occupied Banaras before the rebels could occupy. So General Neil was successful in occupying Banaras. The British massacred thousands of rebels, women and children. So the British killed thousands of Indian, Indian mutineers, the women and children during their fight in Banaras. From Banaras, Neil proceeded to Allahabad. On his way, he massacred thousands of innocent people. He occupied Allahabad on 18th June. So after Batagas, General Neil uh, marched to Allahabad. Okay. Now on his way, he uh, met many uh, Indians who may have revolted against him. So those people uh, were also killed. Okay. And finally, on 18th June, he was able to occupy, um, occupy Allahabad. So, uh, General Neil was able to occupy both Banaras and Allahabad from the Indian re rebels. All right.
Now let's look at the central part of India. All right, uh, in Jhansi and Gwalior, what happened there? Jhansi and Gwalior were another main centers of revolt in in central India. Rani Lakshmi Bai was the ruler in Jhansi. He, uh, she was the widow of Raja Gangadhar Rai, and she rose in revolt. In Jhansi and led the rebels. So, uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai was the leader of the rebels in Jhansi against the British. Okay, in June 1857, she fought against the British like a true heroine with bravery, courage, and military skill, and she was successful in driving back the British. Okay, and established her rule over Jhansi. So Lakshmi Bai was able to fight successfully the British and establish her rule over Jhansi. Tantia Top, after the loss of Kanpur, had come to Jhansi and joined Maharan, um, Rani Lakshmi Bai in her fight against the British. In April 1858, the British troops under the command of Sir Hugh Rose invaded Chasi. Rani Lakshmi Bai was joined by Tantia Top. Now, in April 1858, the British troops under the command of Sir Hugh Rose uh, attacked Jhansi. Okay, uh, both Rani Lakshmi Bai and Tantia Top they fought bravely against the British, but they were defeated after a tough fight. Okay, in May, the British successfully occupied Kalpi. Tantia Top and Rani Lakshmi Bai now left for Gwalior. Because the British captured Kalpi, now they left for Gwalior. They hoped that Sindhya ruler of Gwalior would help them, but it did not happen. The Sindhya ruler did not provide any help to them. The Sindhya ruler, what it did instead, it made preparations to fight not against the British but against Rani and Rani Lakshmi Bai and Tantia Top. Okay, but he was defeated by Maharani Lakshmi Bai's troops, and one of his ministers, Dinkar, escaped to Agra and took shelter with the British. Okay. Um, in this way, uh, Lakshmi Bai got the opportunity to occupy Gwalior in 1858. So Maharani Lakshmi Bai occupied Gwalior. Now the British commander Hugh Rose along with Sindhya invaded Gwalior. The British were supported by the ruler in Sindhya and now both of them again attacked uh, Maharani Lakshmi Bai in Gwalior. On June 11, there took a fierce battle between uh, Maharani Lakshmi Bai and the British troops who were supported by the ruler of Sindhya. The Rani during that fight uh, died on June 7th in the battle dress of soldier mounted on a charger. On June 28th, Tantia Top left Gwalior and escaped to the south. Tantia Top escaped to the south, but he was followed by the British and was captured. Finally, Tantia Top was hanged to death on 18th April 1859. This is how the revolt came to an end uh, with the victory of the British in Gwalior and Jhansi. Now let's look at what happened in Bareilly and Shah Jahanpur. At Bareilly, the revolt was led by Khan Bahadur Khan. He was joined by Malvi Ahmad Ullah Shah of Faizabad. In May 1858, the British commander Campbell crushed the rebellion and occupied Bareilly. Okay, so in Bareilly, the revolt was led by Khan Bahadur Shah and Malvi Ahmed Ullah Shah. Okay, but in their fight against the British, Commander Campbell from the British side defeated them. Malvi Ahmed Shah, they, he ran away to Shah Janpur. Now Campbell followed him and defeated him there. Malvi escaped to Awadh now, but he was murdered through a conspiracy hatched by a brother of Raja Jahanath Singh in June 1858. Okay, Malvi Ahmed Shah Ahmad Ullah Shah was one of the many Malvis who played important role in the uprising of 1857. He was popularly known as Dantra Shah. 
Dantra Shah. He fought in the famous Battle of Chinhat in which the British forces under Henry Lawrence were defeated. Many people asked that he was invested and had magical power and could not be killed by the British. This believed formed the basis of his authority. Now, Malvi Ahmad Ullah Shah played an important role in the revolt of 1857. Okay. The people believed that he had a magical power and because of that he could not be killed by the British and this sort of gave him an authority that he had among the people to lead the people. Okay, the next that we are going to look at is the is Bihar. Okay, in Bihar, who led the revolt? It was Kunwar Singh. Now he was a Jamindar of Jagdishpur and he was discontent with the policy of the British government. Okay, though he was 80 years old, he provided an outstanding military leader and also strategy to the revolt. Okay, he adopted guerrilla tactics of warfare, a kind of warfare, okay, and killed several Europeans during the fight against the British. Okay, he later joined hands with Nana Sahib's forces. He also campaigned in Awadh and Central India against the British government. He raced back to Bihar and he defeated the British forces at Ara. But this proved to be his last battle because he sustained a very fatal injury which caused his death in April 1858. Okay, the fighting, however, even after his death, continued in Bihar against the British, and that fight was led by his brother Aman Amar Singh. Okay, till the end of December 1859, after which the British became victorious and captured Bihar and was able to quell the revolt there. So, until now, we only looked at the northern part of the Indian subcontinent and how the revolt spread along the regions there. Now, let's look at how the revolt spread in the southern part of India. Now, southern part of India did not remain unaffected by the uprising. It was impacted by the revolt. There were occurrences of revolt in present-day Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Even Goa and Pandicherry witnessed some revolt okay, by the Indians against the British. Now, there were risings of people and soldiers at about 20 places in Maharashtra. Okay, Here, the rebels were led by Ranga Babuji Gupte. Okay? A number of persons here were arrested because of their uh, because of their uh, activities, rebellious activities, and they were sentenced to jail and sent to Andaman, okay, Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Mansing Rajput, another leader, he was hanged in public on June 29, 1858. In June 29, 1858. In Andhra Pradesh, the major centers of revolt were the coastal areas from Vishakapatnam to Nellore, along with Hyderabad, Raja Kurnul, Guntur and Kadappa. Okay, and in Tamil Nadu, some of the major centers of revolt were Chengalpet, North Arcot, Salem, Tanjavur, Madurai, Coimbatore and Trichapalli. Okay, and in June 1857, the first infantry battalion refused to move from Madras. In September 1858, Kunda Swami Mudali murdered some European uh, employees uh, in, uh, in Salem. And in Kerala, the re revolt took place specially in Travancore. The soldiers and local people forced open the grain shops. The government arrested 20 soldiers. The revolt continued till 1859. So in South India also the revolt spread to all the states of South India and the revolt there continued till 1859 and we saw how there were major centers of revolt in various uh, provinces of South India. Okay and many people were hanged to death. They were uh, put to jail in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Alright?
Now, the other places apart from the ones that we have just mentioned, what were, what, uh, how did they, how did they witness the uh, revolt? Let's see. So, in the other places also, it was, it was not that these places were unaffected. Punjab was not peaceful at all. Punjab was also affected by the revolt. The Hindustani sepoys at Myanmar Kant cantonment near Lahore, they rose in revolt, but they rose in revolt, but they were severely crushed. So in the province of Punjab, in Lahore, sepoys rose against the British uh, officers, but they were crushed by the British. British officers. Okay, there were small uprisings in southern southeastern Punjab. Uh, there were also rebels who were led by Nahar Singh of Balabkar, Abdul Rahim Khan, the Nawab of Jajjar, Rao Tularam of Rewari. Okay. Of these leaders who led the people there against the British, two of them, the first two were hanged, meaning Nahar Singh of Balabkar and Abdul Rahim Khan, they were hanged, okay? And the third escaped to Kabul. Rao Tularam escaped to Kabul where he spent the rest of his life.